Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Uh, I think I should open in prayer first of all. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our meeting together in this format. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who will surround us at this moment, open our mind pathways to connect by faith with you. Amen. Well, welcome to church, everyone. This being the first time of a no public worship scenario for us, and I'm sure we're all aware of why. But I wish you greetings from St David's Uniting Church. Wherever you sit at this moment, in your home, in your lounge room, at the coffee shop, wherever you're listening or watching us here, I welcome you to worship at St David's. Now, if you're by yourself or with your wife or husband, we hope you enjoy this as well. Uh, we are your worshipping team this morning. So uh, Andrew is preaching and Robin is doing the Bible reading, and we even get a children's time this morning with Heather. So we're at church, and we will do our best to give you a worship time that will be meaningful. Um, please feel free to share the video link with anyone, and um, anyone that you come across that you think might benefit from this weekly thing. If, you, uh, if your friends can't get the technology working, then certainly let us know, and we'll have people that can help them get the technology working on their home computer or their tablet or their iPad. It's important, I think, that in these first few weeks of this new arrangement of worshipping not in a church building, that we um, continue with the habit of keeping perhaps Sunday morning or sometime on a Sunday as a worship, um, worship time for us, by ourselves or with a, with a small gathering even. So that's our endeavour, to give you a meaningful worship time this morning and hopefully um, you'll be able to enjoy it but also go to a deeper place with your faith. Okay, so what we normally would do is notices. So I'm going to bring you some, uh, some small, a small amount of notices that would have been out through the week. You've got a printed copy sent to you and I want to highlight that there's a new cleaning roster that to look at. Now, you might wonder, why do we need a new cleaning roster? If um, no one's going to use the church, well, we still have to just keep it clean. Uh, and so we've got a cut down, um, cut, down worship, uh, cut down cleaning roster for the worship area. There's also um, prayer support that's in the notices. Please look at those, have a look at those names and pray for those people. Uh, the good news, um, at least for the moment, is that um, coming out of Synod is that we're still allowed to meet as home groups. So I wanted to highlight that home groups uh, meet each week in our church. And um, so those home groups can still meet so long as they uh, go with the, the social distancing and the hygiene requirements that everyone's telling us about. So uh, that's a wonderful thing. And I want to just highlight that don't be shy if you're not in a home group um, or you don't have a way of catching up with people, then please let us know. And um, we can probably connect two or three people to, to meet, in a, uh, in a, in, in meet somehow that we can um, have a regular contact with people. It's, it's not a good thing to just be at home the whole time by yourself. And so if you need that, please don't be shy. There's plenty of people here that we can um, meet with you. Okay. Um, let us move into now um, a call to worship. Uh, the, as far as lectionary readings this morning, the psalm is, a ter is terrific. So Psalm 23 we have, um, and that is a, a very nice lectionary uh, reading for this morning. So worshipping in our homes, isolating ourselves from people, the psalm is a reminder that we are all part of a wide, large flock and that Jesus is our shepherd. I'm going to leave it to all of you to read the six verses of the 23rd Psalm. So this morning is a call to worship and to remind us that Jesus is the world's shepherd and we are not isolated as individual sheep, but that we are as a flock of sheep for him to tend. I'm going to read a translation of the 23rd Psalm from singer-songwriter Paul Kelly, something that means a bit to me. Now in this, you'll hear repeated the offer in each verse is that God will come and meet us in the middle of the air, so to speak. And I think this is a gesture to show God wants us to come forward to him as he, come, as he comes forward to us. 
So here it is. I am your true shepherd. I will lead you there. Beside still waters, come and meet me in the middle of the air. I will meet you in the middle of the air. I will lay you down in pastures green and fair. Every soul shall be restored. I will meet them in the middle of the air. Come and meet me in the middle of the air. Through the lonesome valley, my rod and staff you'll bear. Fear not death's dark shadow. Come and meet me in the middle of the air. I will meet you in the middle of the air. With oil I shall anoint you, a table shall I prepare. Your cup will runneth over. Come and meet me in the middle of the air. I will meet you in the middle of the air. In my house you'll dwell forever. You shall not want for care. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you. Come and meet me in the middle of the air and I will meet you in the middle of the air. Let us pray. Lord, today we recall your faithfulness throughout time. Thank you that you walk with us every day, that you are with us in each moment. Thank you that your promises are true and your goodness never fails us. In this moment, we come to you and we lay our lives before you. May we worship and adore you with every fibre of our being. May everything within us cry, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And so today, Lord, we join with all those who worship and confess you as Lord from generations past and present, and with all the angels that sing in heaven of your greatness and beauty, Lord, we adore you. Lord, we love you. Lord, you are so precious to us. Amen. Now, uh, it's special time because I'm going to introduce Heather for children's time. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to children's time. Always wanted to be on TV. Now's my chance. Let's see how I go. I want you to think about how good you are at remembering. When I was a child, we used to play a game about memory. And I'm going to get Ernie to come up and help me with it now. So, in my bag, I've got 10 things. Now, Ernie, yes. I'm going to take them out of my bag, put them on the table. You have to remember what they are because yes. they'll be out for a little while and then I'm putting them away. Okay. So, we have a glue stick, okay. Play-Doh, yeah. a star, a tea bag, a USB cable, mm -hmm. a spanner. Okay. Is that, that is a spanner, isn't it? That's a spanner. Yep. Yeah. Tic Tacs. Good. A bracelet. <laughs> a tape measure. And a biro. Have we got ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. <laughs> Have a good look at the money. Yeah. All right. All righty. Yes. I'm putting them away. Oh, <laughs> you're going to put away so quickly. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yep. Go okay. All yeah. right. So glue stick. Yep. Play doh. Play doh. Tape. Measure. Tic tacs. USB cable. Star. Tea bag. Spanner. Bracelet. And pen. All righty, let's see how good you are at remembering. What did I have? Yeah, okay, so you had the USB cable, you had the glue, you had the Tic Tacs, you had a spanner, uh, you had a star, uh, you had a pen. Um, Pretty uh, impressive so far, Ernie. Um, a bracelet? Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, something to play with? 
Is that your mould? Play-Doh? Play-Doh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Something that you might want to have when you get home and relax? Um, I've had the Tic Tacs. No, tea. Tea, <laughs> tea bag. And... Um, Something to measure things. Oh, the tape measure. Okay. Of you did pretty well. Thanks, oh, thank Anne. You. Thank Thanks. You. Remembering things is really important. The psalm that Ernie read before has a verse that I just love, and I think it's really important for us to think about it now. In the, um, in the Good News version, it says, Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord for you are with me. These are pretty dark times. Things are happening that we don't understand. But I hope that we can all remember to hold on to the knowledge that we are not alone. God is with us. God bless you all. Um, we're going to come back into a time of prayer, a prayer of confession. And uh, you'll see or you'll hear that um, towards the end of this, I, I read a song because I thought it's, it's hard. We're not singing um, some familiar songs. So I hope um, that at the end of this prayer of confession, you'll, you might recognise that the, the lyrics to a song, that a hymn that I read might be familiar to you. So let us pray. Lord, we confess our failings as a world, as a community and as individuals. We fall short in your commandment to love others as we love ourselves. We do terrible things to people who are different to the majority, who look different, who speak differently, who have different backgrounds, upbringings, cultural beliefs. When we look at someone as different, we can sometimes not serve your purpose, Lord, in all we do, but, but we often serve the opposite purpose of your will. Lord, we become selfish in our thoughts and in our actions as a world, as a community and as individuals. Lord, we bow before you in full confession of our weaknesses, and in, honest, and in honest humility, we relinquish the pride that we have in our own abilities and we give over our dishonesty that only leaves us deceiving ourselves. Oh Lord, teach us these hard lessons that we need. Through Jesus through Jesus, Lord, we thank you that we have grace with no boundaries, that your grace is not beyond anything that we have done or have not done. And Lord, with true confession and repentance comes forgiveness. And I will sing of my Redeemer, of his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, made me free. And I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God, with him to be. Oh, sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, he paid the debt, and he's made me free. Amen. I invite Robin to come up and to do the Epistle Bible reading, please. Thank you, Robin. I'm reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians, a reading in chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. You yourselves used to be in the darkness, Lord... But since you have become the Lord's people, you are in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light. For it's the light that brings a rich harvest of every kind of goodness, righteousness and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the worthless things that people do. 
things that belong to the darkness. Instead, bring them out into the light. It is really too shameful even to talk about the things they do in secret. And when all things are brought out into the light, then their true nature is clearly revealed. For anything that is clearly revealed becomes light. That's why it is said, wake up sleeper and rise from death and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Well, friends, uh, I'm bringing you the, the, the word this morning. Uh, the story from John is a really long story, only in numbers of verses. It's actually a pretty quick incident, but, but John gives us a lot of detail for this. So I'm going to ask Robin to, to read, and then I'll cut in, and uh, we'll have bits of the gospel reading and then bits of the preaching. But let's, let's pray first. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So Robin's going to bring us the first bit of um, John chapter 9. I'm reading verses 1 to 7. The words of the Gospel according to John chapter 9. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. Thanks, Robin. What does it mean for the church to proclaim a saviour who heals when, as we know, the population of the world is on the verge of a vast sickness? Should we stop everything and just pray to God to heal us, to heal all the people who are suffering all over the world? When I'm writing this on Friday evening, there were 244,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus around the world and more than 10,000 people have died and are being mourned by their friends and family. Well, surely we must pray and indeed we shall pray and indeed we have been praying this morning. But our prayers must also match with our attitude and our intent and our actions and our outcomes, our fruits, if you will. As we will see as we go through this, the Pharisees in this story have a mismatch between their proclamations about righteousness and their own blindness and deafness to the true meaning of God's word. Both historical in this context, they are considering the Old Testament scriptures, as does Jesus, and also present day, Jesus as the word of God here and now, but also Jesus as the word of God in this story. Robin's going to read us a bit more from verses 8 to 12. The neighbours and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. (laughs) 
the confusion that surrounds us these days, of course, is not new. And we see confusion arising in this story. Wherever there are multiple witnesses to an event, every person who saw it has their own version of what happened. And all around us today, people have their own version of what is needed, what is necessary right now. What is acceptable behaviour? What is the right thing to do? In some countries, the societal norms are, as a society, centre around the good of the nation and also conformity. In other countries, the rights of the individual to choose his or her own course of action is cherished as a fundamental freedom. And as a result, we see different things happening around the world with these different societies, different rates of infection. In Jesus' day, there were lots of opinions about the right way to behave. And we will see that Jesus is mostly more concerned about the faith of each person he encountered and rather less concerned about what people thought was right or even what people considered to be righteous in the eyes of God. The man born blind was given a simple task by Jesus. He did it and he was healed. How easy it must have seemed to him to be healed by this act of washing which took a few minutes. And what a contrast to the rest of his life. The years and years spent sitting at the gate begging, fruitless, despairing, How easy is the simple task that is given to most of us at this time? Be calm, stay away from other people as much as you can and wash your hands a lot. But how hard it has seemed to be and how many other things people want to do instead. Much of it revolving around making sure we're looking after ourselves first. The reason... So many people in our society are finding it hard is a lack of trust. It's a lack of trust in others, a lack of trust in our leaders and experts, and mostly, in my view, a lack of trust in ourselves. We don't feel at peace in ourselves. What will return to our society a sense of peace, or at least a sense of calm? Well, I know that you know where I'm going with this. Trusting in God is the first step towards extending grace and trust to others. One of our major tasks at this time, I believe, is to be as patient and calm as we can be with God's help. So more of the reading. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he'd received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. Which may even continue. Oh, no, no. it doesn't continue. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise over the page. Now, of course, there might be several reasons why the Pharisees as a group are upset by Jesus healing this blind man. First, I think, and we can't discount this, is that Jesus isn't anybody. Jesus is not a Pharisee. He's not a trained rabbi. He is just somebody who has turned up out of nowhere, from the Pharisees' point of view and from Jewish society's point of view, a few months prior to this and has started preaching and gathering crowds. Who does he think he is? And of course, we must add to this the scandal that he's doing this on the day of rest. Uh, God had told the Jewish people in their Ten Commandments about the need for a day of rest. The Pharisees, and indeed all good Jewish people, 
took this very seriously and had observed the Sabbath and kept it holy in a tradition that had arisen over the centuries of Jewish practice. Now, traditions, societal norms can serve and do serve good purposes. They can keep us safe. They can provide incentives to do the right thing. And they can also put in place useful corrective measures against people who decide to do the wrong thing. But when our rituals and our traditions are made into something more important than the simple act of serving another person with kindness and dignity, then it's not the serving the person that's the problem. Right now is a time when doing the right thing is vitally important. But there's a problem with that, isn't there? And we see it around us. It only takes a few people doing the wrong thing or being careless to undo the good work of the great bulk of the population who are doing what they're told. We might ask ourselves in that context, what's the point of being good? Robin. The Jews did not believe that he'd been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who was, you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has, has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Thanks, Robin. Beautifully read. John's a, a master storyteller, isn't he? And uh, the, the, the details in this that, uh, that really you know, make us smile but also really make us think. And um, it points out the, the relentlessness of these Pharisees. Um, almost, you might say, obsession with the way they do things. Obsession with observance is a characteristic of religious people which can be very dangerous. And it's not limited, uh, as we would think by observing the, the media, it's not limited to Muslim extremists today, but obsession with observing a particular set of rules can flourish in all sorts of places. And generally, that's a negative thing. It means that whatever we're obsessing about has become more important than treating those around us with dignity, kindness and respect. The man born blind has a great story to tell, but the Pharisees can't hear it because they're locked into their particular worldview. 
I think that, that has something to say to us today, I'm sure. But the, 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 the point of view I want to put forward uh, comes from Paul in Galatians. And he says to us, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There's no law against such things. Robin's going to bring us the last little section, 34 to 41, of this wonderful story. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and that those who do see may become blind. And some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we're not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. Once again, it's, it's tempting just to stop right there um, because John's a much better storyteller than I am a, a preacher. Um, the Pharisees in this story, though, fail at every turn to exhibit any of the marks of a true follower of our Lord. By contrast, of course, the man born blind, the man who has had this direct experience of the power of God to change his life, simply will not be moved from his testimony. The authorities challenge him, people want him to give another version of his story, but he simply will not. He simply cannot do anything other than be truthful to what he has experienced. As we've been saying all morning, and as is obvious, we're in a, a dark time at the moment, and that is very true. Do we have faith that God, through the Holy Spirit, is leading and guiding us in this time? I believe we do. God has never promised any easy road for those of us who believe. He has promised, and Heather alluded to this, that he will be with us always, in all circumstances. And I believe that whatever happens next for our church, for our congregation, for the communities in which we live, for Cooper's Plains and Salisbury and surrounding areas, for the people of our nation and the people of all nations across the planet, that God is with us still. It's always good to go back to quoting the Apostle Paul. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm going to finish uh, with a prayer that was sent out uh, during the week from our moderator, the Reverend Dave Baker, and I invite you to pray with me. God, you are revealed in Jesus Christ, in whom you became one with us. Remind us of your solidarity with us in all the vagaries of our lives. Strengthen our confidence in you that we may act with wisdom and grace. Calm our fears that we might be strength and hope for others. Lord God, we lift up to you all those responsible for decision-making regarding this pandemic. Lead them by your spirit. We pray for those who are vulnerable and marginalised that through this crisis our societies may especially care for them. Lord, we thank you for the rich heritage we enjoy in this country. May we act as those who are aware of the future we are building for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
Uh, thank you for being with us this morning. It's been our privilege to present worship with you. Um, Reverend Janie will be back next week and we will see you all then. I will now just give the, uh, the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord show his favour to you and give you peace. Amen.